Hi, this is Superintendent Wayne Kazmercheck, and I'm going to walk through the presentation that we've been using throughout the community to inform uh, about the bond referendum coming up on November 5th. The presentation is titled Building Our Future 2019 Building Bond Referendum. There are several driving factors that got us to where we are today with this plan. First of all, our strategic plan. We have a strategic plan that was adopted in the spring of 2018. The uh, concept of facilities is sprinkled throughout the plan, but one place in particular is one of our strategies. We will ensure learning environments enhance students' educational experience. The second driving factor is enrollment. The district-wide capacity is uh, 8,702 students. And we're at capacity right now. We open the school year at, at exactly 8,702 students. And we're projecting that we'll be just under 11,000 students in the next decade. The 10,806 figure represents a 75% build out of our agricultural land. Safety and security needs are also a driving factor. A lot has changed around the expectations on safety and security in, in recent years. And um, there are some areas where we need to make some improvements in our buildings. Not only that, but also our bus drop off and parent drop off, those are areas that we we need to invest and make those areas more safe uh, for our students. We have aging facilities, and they, those aging facilities have deferred maintenance needs. Our maintenance crew does a great job in upkeeping our buildings, but when we have when you have old buildings, ultimately they need new roofs and new windows, and we need to replace parking lots and uh, things like that. When you have uh, the number of buildings we have and the age um, of those buildings, so it's just a simple fact of life when you own as many buildings as, we, as the school district does. And then our, the future of educational programming and um, this is largely in part tied back to our strategic plan. Our strategic plan has a new vision of where we want to go with our educational programming and our facilities need to come along with that new vision. A little over a year ago the school board took the bold step to uh, charge a committee of community members and staff members to come up with a facilities master plan that would help us achieve our educational goals, would be financially attainable and sustainable, would reflect the values and priorities of the communities of the White Bear Lake area schools, would accommodate our enrollment growth, cover our needs for the next 10 years, and also identify what might be coming in the, uh, the 10 to 20 year range. It would be aligned with our strategic vision that we would optimize the use of our existing facilities, again, pro um, accommodating our projected enrollment growth, and then also support educational delivery, along with the rationale for all of these recommendations that would, that would emerge from the process. So the process lasted about seven months. We had 90 community members, staff members, students involved. There were three different subcommittees. Over 10 committee meetings and over 36 hours of meetings for the committee and they ultimately came up with one comprehensive plan. So we will watch a video now and this is one of two videos. The first one is the video that explains some of the highlights of the plan, the key parts of the plan. We call this our what video. It's a 624 fact. We've got a really good thing going in White Bear Lake area schools. So good that families are choosing to build their homes and their futures in our communities. The district has seen 7% growth since 2010 and expects 2,000 more new students will enroll during the next 10 years. Let's face it, that's 25% higher than our current capacity. On November 5th, voters will be asked to approve a bond referendum to fund a comprehensive facilities plan. This plan is the result of a nearly year-long process involving a committee made up of 90 parents, staff, and community members. If the bond referendum is approved, every building in the district would be updated in some way, creating a domino effect of solutions. Here's a bird's eye view of the plan. District-wide additions and renovations would accommodate projected enrollment growth safe, secure, and healthy learning environments for all students, increased opportunities for students through a single, unified 9-12 through 12 high school experience, and flexibly designed learning spaces to support student-centered instruction. It's important to note, the average age of our district buildings is 50 years old. Tack on another five decades for the oldest building. 
If approved, there are building-specific changes that will happen in order to meet student enrollment and academic needs. The new elementary school would be built in Hugo, Onika Elementary would become a K-5 through school, and Hugo Elementary would become a Northern Early Childhood Center. The facilities plan also includes bringing all high school students together in a renovated North Campus, which means better access to more comprehensive course offerings, including college and career pathways options. Fewer transitions for students during critical adolescent developmental stages, and maintaining consistent, longer-lasting staff and student relationships. The high school expansion allows for Sunrise Park Middle School to relocate to South Campus. The current Sunrise Park Middle School site would house various multi-generational community programs, including the Senior Center and Early Childhood Programming, the Transition Education Center, and the District Office. This makes room for Central Middle School to expand and take over the current District Center building. This comprehensive plan impacts all of our buildings and students. If the $326 million bond referendum is approved in November, the average homeowner would see a tax impact of about $23 per month. The future is bright. Families continue to choose our school district because of the way we support and engage all learners. After a tremendous amount of discussion and planning over the past year, the team came up with a plan that would accommodate our projected enrollment growth. It provides more programs and opportunities for all residents, aligns with the district's strategic plan, and is financially sustainable. Please learn all you can about the bond referendum and remember to vote on November 5th. All right, so assuming you watched the video, I'm, I'm not gonna read through this next slide, but this is the committee recommendation. Again, the highlights here were part of the video, but you can see them here. It's important to emphasize that this plan impacts all of our buildings and it impacts all of our students. So it's a very comprehensive plan that clearly does that. It impacts all of our buildings, all of our students, and this graphic here shows each of our buildings and it lists the main part of the plan for each of our buildings so you can see that each building is impacted in some fairly significant way and again this speaks to the comprehensive nature of the plan. One of the key parts of this plan is the building of a new White Bear Lake area high school on the North Campus site. So we would be utilizing the existing square footage of North Campus. The building was built uh, several decades ago and it was built well. It needs to be updated, it needs to be remodeled, but we have a head start on this new high school because we have um, the square footage that currently exists. And we'll be able to incorporate that existing square footage into the new high school and that will make, um, we'll be able to modify the older part of the building to in, and incorporate that in with the newer part of the building and it'll be a, a facility that we would all be very proud of. The video touched on the tax impact. The average home in the White Bear Lake Area Schools is valued at about $275,000. So the monthly tax impact would be about $23 a month. This graph shows voter approved school debt tax levy for payable 2019 on a home with an estimated market value of $250,000. This provides some context as to the tax impact from where we currently are to what it would be if the bond is approved. So currently, our annual voter-approved uh, school debt tax levy is $24 on a home valued at $250,000. If the bond referendum is approved, that would move to $275, which is below the average of our neighbors. And you can see the neighboring school districts, North St. Paul, Maplewood, Oakdale, Stillwater, Moundsview, Forest Lake, Roseville, Montemedi, Centennial, and South Washington County have all, in relatively recent years, have um, passed um, bond referendum, so the tax impact would not put us a, as an outlier in this, in this cohort of districts. In fact, we would be below the average of this group. Now, depending on the value of a homeowner's property and their household income, they might qualify for a refund through the Minnesota Homestead Credit Refund Program. So here are a couple of examples. I'll focus on the bottom uh, graphic the residential homestead market value of $275,000. Again, that's the average 
valued home in the school district. So the um, estimated annual tax impact is $280. If we look at household income and select any of those and move across, you can see what the additional refund would be. I'll focus on the bottom number, the $100,000. That's about the average household income in the White Bear Lake area schools. So a family in that situation would see a $160 refund through the Minnesota Homestead Credit Program. And so ultimately the net tax impact would be less than $10 a month. This would be available every year and a lot of our families would qualify for this refund. All right, this is the second of our videos and this is a video that talks about the why of the bond referendum. What I love most about White Bear Lake area schools is really the great sense of community that we have here. You live in White Bear Lake, you live in anywhere in the surrounding areas, you're a bear. When I see our students and what they're doing, you know, I, I feel pride that they're a product of, of our system and of our community. I'm so proud to be part of this school district. It's a very special place. Our strategic plan has provided a new direction for us. We have defined what we want our students' experience to be here, and we need facilities to come along with that new vision. And that's why on November 5th, we're asking our community to come out and vote on a bond referendum that would support these exciting changes for our students. This plan is focused on four areas. It accommodates our projected enrollment growth, it provides safe, secure, and healthy learning environments for all students. This plan increases opportunities for students through a single, unified 9 through 12 high school experience. And lastly, it creates flexibly designed learning spaces to support student-centered instruction. I'm excited that we're actually looking at what would be best for our schools and our students. There was a lot that went into planning for this. Lots of opportunities for community members to have a voice. The fact that I've had a say in different things, been able to speak for my peers have been absolutely incredible. We unanimously approved a plan that we thought was best for everybody involved. People are choosing to move to White Bear Lake. They're choosing to build homes in White Bear Lake. So we're essentially at capacity right now, and we anticipate adding another 25% to our student population over the next decade. So that's good for businesses and property values to have a desirable place that people want to live in. Our facilities are aging. Simple comforts like our air conditioning and heating and um, making sure the roof isn't leaking, those things impact what we're able to do for students. Expectations around safety and security have evolved over the last few years and Samu invested in our facilities to make sure our students and staff are safe. We've done a lot of great work for the past 30 plus years, making sure our community feels supported in that split campus model, but it's not the best that we can be. Many different options were discussed and everyone arrived that we are a one high school community and coming together as one White Bear Lake area high school is going to propel us into the future. We know that transitioning from one building to another can cause stress. We know that building relationships with adults is really critical. When you have two different high schools, you have only so much time that you can establish that relationship and then they're off to a different campus. You finally start to get comfortable in North Campus and you start to learn what the circles are and then boom, you're in another school and now you're in the maze of South Campus. In order to maintain the level of programming that we currently offer and even expand that, we need to be one campus. And so when we looked at coming together in that high school that will eventually grow to 3,200 students, there are really intentional ways that we can make a big school feel small for our students and families. The idea that we're all bears and we're all under the same roof will allow us to reimagine what the high school experience is for our students. Flexible learning spaces around all of our buildings, not just focused in our high schools, I think is really key. I mean, just sitting in front of a, a teacher and being lectured, I mean, that doesn't work for everyone, and that's kind of how our system is set up right now. Student agency is a big part of the strategic plan. So I like that we're looking at more collaborative spaces. I want them to explore and find and discover that learning on their own. We're at a pivotal moment in our district's history to really form what we believe education should look like for our students now and for many, many years to come. This $326 million bond referendum impacts all of our buildings and students and can be accomplished with a tax impact of about $23 a month for the average homeowner. Whether you have kids in school or not, I mean, the bottom line is, you know, we have to accommodate the kids and, uh, and do what's best for the kids, really, you know, and so that's, that's what we're trying to do. Please learn all that you can about this referendum 
and remember to vote November 5th. We have a lot of information available on the district's website. The homepage has multiple ways to find the bond referendum information. We've circled those on, on this example. If you click on any of those, you'll be taken to the page that looks like this. On this page, you'll find a lot of information, including the videos that were embedded in the presentation. There's a full list of questions that were asked and answered at all three of the bond referendum public meetings. It's a tax calculator, so you can type in your property's value and you'll be able to determine what, your, what the tax impact would be for you. There's a frequently asked questions section and there is early voting information. As always, please feel free to reach out with any questions you might have. You can email us at bond2019 at isd624.org or contact me directly at 651-407-7563.